We're seeing the use of artificial intelligence. We're seeing the use of machine learning in the metaverse, uh, not only cross barriers from what we saw with Bill Toronto and the Merck Global Fund and Eric from Generable early on within clinical trials, but then also from Tim Gilchrist and Anthem in terms of how Anthem is using data science and Python to extrapolate and, and bring BERT and Google into what's happening in digital health. And now we're going to have even a deeper look at what the next phase of this means in the ecosystem. Uh, and we're really happy to have join us today, Dr. Yuja Gao from the National Ho University Hospital. Uh, Dr. Gao, thank you for joining us today and handing the virtual uh, microphone over to you. Hi, Stan. Thank you very much. Very glad to be here and um, very honored to be invited today. So um, a very good morning, afternoon, evening to everyone here. So I'm just going to quickly share my screen. And here we go. Right, so um, today I'm going to just give a very quick talk about what holomedicine is and how we are using it at our National University Hospital here in Singapore and what mixed reality can potentially bring to us when it comes to the next phase of um, healthcare technology. So just a little bit of background about myself. I'm a specialist in hepatobiliary, pancreas and liver transplant surgery. And I'm also the assistant group chief technology officer for the university health system. And my main areas when it comes to med tech and um, I guess health tech innovation is on mixed reality as well as 5G systems and integrated cloud network. So just a bit of declarations as well as um, disclaimers. So what exactly is holomedicine? Um, essentially, this term is an amalgamation of the words hologram and medicine, and it's about the use of holographic displays and mixed reality devices when it comes to healthcare delivery and patient fronting services. And the whole aim is to try to enhance um, the way we treat our patients and to improve patient outcomes in our day-to-day -day practice. So just a little bit of background about the difference between VR, AR, and MR. Um, virtual reality, we're all very familiar when it comes to a fully enclosed um, computer-generated environment. The traditional sense of augmented reality or AR is a digital overlay, usually in two dimension, you know, on, on a uh, monocular device um, like Google Glass. And mixed reality is sort of the next generation or the next phase of devices where you kind of have a interaction between the virtual world as well as the physical world around us. So why mixed reality and, and what kind of difference is mixed reality going to bring to healthcare compared to virtual reality and augmented reality? So there's a few different devices out there when it comes to mixed reality. Um, I, I guess the market leaders at this point in time are the HoloLens 2 from Microsoft and the Magic Leap 2 from the Magic Leap company. And the biggest difference, I think, when it comes to devices like this and traditional VR, AR devices is the sensor combination on these devices. I mean, you have multiple cameras, um, RGB cameras, you have 3D mapping cameras, you have infrared cameras, and all these are essentially information and data receiving um, capsules where you can draw real-time data from the surrounding and, and work on it. So, you know, instead of working off a single video camera or a single video stream, you're working off multiple video streams from different cameras, um, different sources, and essentially being able to perform real-time um, image analysis of computer vision and machine vision on everything that you see on, on the HoloLens itself. Um, one of the biggest areas that we're using mixed reality in, in my unit is in the operating theater and in, in, in our surgical departments. Um, we use it for surgical planning, surgical navigation, remote proctoring, real-time image analysis, and, and also to try and increase connectivity using, um, I, I guess you can call it the healthcare metaverse. So when it comes to surgical planning, um, it is quite routine nowadays in, in my hospital for us to use this, um, especially for complex cases. So what we do is that we get the patient's DICOM scans, be it CT, MR, or PET scans, and we upload it onto our HoloLens devices. So we use um, the HoloLens 2 device from Microsoft. And essentially, we use that as a surgical planning tool where we are able to visualize the patient scans in three dimension instead of just using it um, or viewing it on a computer screen and scrolling up and down. And one of the biggest benefits is that with the HoloLens and the holographic display, you know, we can actually superimpose 
or overlay the patient scans onto the patient themselves and you get to see exactly where the structures are in the native locations and you don't have to do you know mental gymnastics to try and correlate what you see on a computer screen and what's actually inside the patient so i'm just going to show a quick video of how we use it so this is for one of my transplant patients this is for the, a, a living donor liver transplant so it is quite routine now in our standard workflow that all our liver transplant patients um, have their CT scans um, segmented using a semi-autonomous segmentation software to look at, for example, the hepatic arteries, the portal veins, as well as the different parts of the liver. And we are able to plan essentially how we are going to transect or cut through the liver during the surgery itself. We are able to have a, you know, a walkthrough of how we're going to do the surgery even before we start and essentially plan um, our transaction lines through the liver um, before the day of the surgery itself. So, I mean, we could have done this using the standard computer screen, but having it on a 3D holographic display just gives you a level of interaction and immersion that just was not possible um, before this. We use it quite routinely for our pediatrics transplant program as well, where we are using this technology for donor recipient size matching. Because uh, one of the biggest problems when it comes to living donor transplants for pediatrics is that most of the time, the adult um, organ where, where the, the donor comes from is kind of is, is too big for the recipient, especially for a child who's about only six to seven months old. Um, Traditionally, how we used to try to match, excuse me, the, the liver size is just to use volume calculations. But we all know that, you know, different people's liver size and shape is a little bit different. So this technology actually allows us to have a look and physically see whether or not a liver will fit inside um, the, the child. Surgical navigation, so we use it during the surgery itself. Um, the HoloLens gives us the ability to have hands-free control. Um, we use it for, I think, 12 different surgical departments within a hospital at this point in time. Um, this is one of our surgical new use cases where the neurosurgeons superimpose the patient's MI brain onto the patient's head during a surgery to locate a deep brain tumor um, you know, in, in real time using a three-dimensional hologram. I'm just going to quickly go through. This is, again, one of our liver transplant cases where um, we were doing a laparoscopic donor surgery. And essentially, the surgeon in this case, if you remember this image, this was doing from, from the planning phase. We are using it during the surgery itself. And we can actually stream a live feed from a laparoscopic camera inside the patient directly to the HoloLens. And this is kind of what you get, which is a virtual screen. And this gives you the ability to sort of have an infinite screen size and to move the, the um, screen anywhere you want, irrespective of where the physical location of the traditional screens are. Um, our cardiothoracic surgeons use this for minimally invasive cardiac surgery. So this is one of our cases for a minimally invasive cardiac bypass, where the surgeons use this to decide um, which rib space they are going to insert the laparoscopic ports um, to make sure that they are bang on target the first time to avoid the need to, for example, crack ribs in order for um, the angulation to be correct if they got into the wrong rib space. Um, remote proctoring is something that we see it's going to be a huge use case, especially when you talk about the healthcare metaverse. So I'm just going to fast forward this video. So this is me in my office in Singapore. And this avatar here, this is one of my colleagues, is based in Hamburg in Germany. And, you know, we are just communicating directly through the HoloLens itself. Um, I can manipulate the image, he can manipulate the image, and, and we can essentially um, discuss about the surgery in real time um, in the healthcare metaverse. So we've tried this um, in Nepal, where I was in, uh, in October last year, where we managed to connect surgeons from Nepal, Japan, India, and Singapore. And essentially, we were having a multidisciplinary um, tumor board discussion, you know, purely through the whole lens itself and it, it gives you a much better immersion and a much better understanding um, compared to just a traditional zoom or a, a, a team's call this is great well thank you very much dr gao and uh, really appreciate your time in demonstrating this and again anyone who wants to get in touch with dr gao please do look at the linkedin link that uh, the team has posted in the chat box and follow up with him separately thank you very much thank you